The food is 50% fat marbled beef. <laughs> Could you imagine like someone like a Dr. Gregor coming out and saying that? <laughs> ah, that'd be the day that gravity doesn't exist. Anyway, that's not the answer. As anyone who follows Dr. Michael Gregor's work knows full well. If you aren't familiar with Dr. Gregor, he's a medical doctor that favors a plant-based lifestyle, which is why my bad joke is especially laughable or not. Anyway, I ran across a short video Dr. Gregor released on the most potent foods for reducing all-cause mortality, the outcome of death from any cause, essentially heart disease, cancer, dementia, etc. Let's listen in and then let's crack open a few studies to confirm or deny the claims. Welcome to episode one in my series on the anti-aging eight, let's get nutty. Compared to any other food group, consumption of nuts associated with the lowest risk of premature death, a palm full of nuts each day may be enough to offer maximal benefit. Now, too many nuts, more than a cup a day, may increase the risk of kidney stones, and peanut butter consumption does not appear to have the same salutary effects. Okay, let's stop it there for a moment, because just in 25 seconds, he says a lot. So the food is nuts, and the claim is that it's the most potent food for reducing all-cause mortality, which is that outcome that I briefly described earlier. He also mentions that too many nuts might raise the risk of kidney stones and peanut butter is exempt from this all-cause mortality benefit. We'll get to each, but let's discuss the primary one, nuts. Do they reduce all-cause mortality? For that, we can lean on this analysis. In this study, researchers compiled 18 studies looking at nut consumption and all-cause mortality. They compared people's data across all 18 studies between those who consumed no to almost no nuts per week versus those that ate nuts each week. From there, they quantified the number of people who died in each group from cardiovascular disease or cancer and established a risk of death mortality based on nut consumption. Here is that data. We have the studies on the left side, the relative risk of all-cause mortality consuming low amounts of nuts to consuming high amounts of nuts on the right side, and the numbers are transformed into dots and lines called confidence intervals in the middle. If the dots and lines move to the left, there's a reduced risk when consuming more nuts. That diamond at the bottom is the average of all the studies together. So clearly, this analysis indicates Dr. Greger is correct. Yet, keep in mind that we're discussing associative studies here, and we just went over what is known as an unadjusted result. That means that the researchers are not controlling for other factors, other variables that might explain the results other than nut consumption. So for example, do people who eat nuts also exercise more or do they weigh less or do they eat less in general? So the researchers broke up the studies based on the level of adjustment here. Up top are the minimally adjusted, indicating studies only controlling for sex and age. The bottom grouping of studies is the fully adjusted analysis, also adjusting for smoking, alcohol, body weight, fruit and vegetable consumption, physical activity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, vitamin supplementation, total calorie intake, fish intake, red meat intake, and a few studies also adjusted for whole grain consumption. But regardless of the analysis that you look at, both indicate reduced all-cause mortality from greater nut consumption, again, indicating that Dr. Greger is still correct. But he also mentions that overconsumption can raise the risk of kidney stones, and he mentions that more than a handful of nuts per day may not offer additional benefit. Well, we'll address that second point later, but let's address the kidney stone risk. There are a few case reports of people consuming large amounts of nuts and developing kidney stones and kidney pathology, but these types of reports are among the lowest tier of evidence in science, considering that they involve a single person and don't control for any other factors. That said, there is some evidence that high oxalate foods, like some nuts, almonds in particular, 
can contribute to kidney stone formation. This isn't specific to nuts, but some fall in that camp, so he may have a point there too. He also mentions that peanut butter does not provide these anti-mortality benefits that we just went over. There's a little more here than he gets into in the video. Peanut butter in small amounts seems associated with slightly reduced all-cause mortality, as we see in column C2 here, with a loss of an effect with greater consumption. However, if we uh, return to this analysis, the researchers are including more data and indicate, as seen here, with a relative risk reduction of about 11%, and one row down, looking at peanuts specifically, a slightly better result with greater certainty. So it seems to me that peanuts at least provide some benefit if these associations hold true, which across greater data sets, they do. This was also further corroborated in more recent studies indicating the same result. All right, Dr. Greger has one more thing to say, and then we need to discuss how much of these nuts that we need to consume for maximum benefit. And of all nuts, walnuts may be the healthiest. Stay tuned for episode two of our Anti-Aging 8 series. It's brief, but he mentions walnuts being the best of them all. You could say it is the nut to rule them all, and in the darkness, bind them. Galadriel with the almond nut, Elrond with the hazelnut, and Sauron with the walnut, which can never be destroyed unless it is cast into the fires of Mount Doom. Or I guess you could use a nutcracker, if only Frodo had thought of that. Anyway, I'm sure there are a few blank stares looking at me right now, a little confused. Is the walnut superior? This is a tough one because we need comparative analyses. And although I did find some narrative reviews indicating that walnuts might be among the best for cardiovascular disease, I couldn't find anything directly comparing in relation to all-cause mortality. So I'll just keep myself firmly planted on the, I don't know, but it probably doesn't matter so long as we know that the association indicates overall health improvement. Speaking to that, I discovered a fascinating study that aims to quantify the life extension benefit of walnut consumption and how much is optimal per day. I'll be covering that for the Physionic Insiders. If you're interested in having access to all my analyses, including that one, hop on over and join the Physionic Insiders, linked in the description. The final question is, what is the optimal amount of nuts in general, according to the research that we've been over? Well, look at this data. The vertical axis is mortality risk. So the lower the lines go, the better. Anything under 1.0, there is a reduced risk. The horizontal axis is the amount of nut consumption of all kinds. So about three servings per week is associated with the greatest reduction in all-cause mortality, without much change going higher. On a daily basis, that equates to about 12 grams per day. Not a lot needed. So overall, I think Dr. Greger did a great job. I mean, keep in mind that he didn't cite any studies, so he may have looked at some other studies that I didn't. But even with that in mind, it seems most of his points do hold true, except, you know, maybe the peanut butter and peanut perspective. But he's made other claims in the past as well, and you can find those right here. Thanks for watching. <laughs>